Hey everyone, this is The Mind of Lilith, and thank you for joining me for this week's natal chart analysis for Katz Williams. For this interpretation, we're going to focus on Katz angular houses, the first, fourth, seventh, and tenth houses. These are cardinal houses that represent the personality, home and family, relationships, and social status, respectively. Planets that are in angular houses have a greater strength and intensity than planets in succedent or cadent houses because the angular houses are about initiation, creation, stimulation, activation, and motivation. Mars in the seventh house uses a different amount of force than Mars in the third or the eleventh house. So for today, I want to look at how the condition of these houses has affected Cat's life, namely his personality, his career, his family dynamics, and his relationships. According to Astro.com, Cat Williams was born on September 2nd, 1971 at 528 a.m. in Cincinnati, Ohio. So he was pretty much born around dawn. And when someone is born between 4 to 6 a.m., their sun and ascendant are usually in the same house, even if they're not in the same sign. Now let's look at his placements. He has a sun at 9 degrees and 16 minutes of Virgo in the first house. His moon is at 1 degree and 14 minutes of Aquarius in the sixth house. His ascendant is at 18 degrees and 47 minutes of Leo. His Mercury is at 27 degrees and 56 minutes of Leo in the first house. Square Neptune and Jupiter in the fourth house. Um, his Mercury is also combusts his sun in Virgo, which gives him hubris, arrogance, but also a superior intellect. Mercury is exalted in Virgo and Leo gives Mercury heightened awareness, perceptiveness, clarity of thought, creativity, confidence, courage, and speaking from the heart, even if it's not politically correct. His Venus is at 10 degrees and 48 minutes of Virgo in its fall, and the first house square Saturn and Gemini in the 10th house. Venus in Virgo is also square Neptune and Jupiter. This is expressed as excessive generosity, luck from generosity, empathy for the common man, someone who's a martyr or someone who has a savior complex. And this is someone who's self-sacrificing. He has Mars at 12 degrees and 14 minutes of Aquarius in the sixth house of joy. Mars in Aquarius can bring you a lot of frenemies, uh, many enemies, violent friends, enemies at work, competition at work, etc. Because Aquarius is also on the cusp of the seventh house, Cat is married to his work. Cat has Jupiter at 28 degrees and 53 minutes of Scorpio in the fourth house. He has Saturn at 6 degrees and 17 minutes of Gemini in the 10th house. This is fame and achievements as a communicator, success in media, a strong legacy. He has Uranus at 11 degrees and 46 minutes in Libra in the second house. He's very liberal with money. This is opposite Chiron and Aries. He is a sucker for a sob story. Um, he gives money to people to help them heal or fix their issues. Cat also has Neptune at zero degrees and 25 minutes of Sagittarius in the fourth house conjunct Jupiter, a very spiritual or religious upbringing. Uh, with Saturn opposing Neptune, at some point he lost faith in his father or a religion. Um, this is the global citizen, large homes, multiple homes. Cat Williams has Pluto at 28 degrees and 47 minutes of Virgo in the second house. His north node is 13 degrees and one minute in Aquarius in the sixth house. He has Chiron at 12 degrees and 58 minutes of Aries in the eighth house. Chiron the eighth deals with healing issues about sexuality, power, abusive power, identity. Cat uh, is going through his Chiron return. So he's dealing with these themes now. He's been dealing with these themes since 2018. So here are some important configurations in his chart. He has a grand air trine consisting of Uranus and Libra, Saturn and Gemini, and the moon, Mars, and North Node and Aquarius. Prophetic insights, incisive perception, the need to communicate, harsh direct communication, erratic communication, unstable thinking, working with frenemies, and also violent tendencies. He has a T-square that consists of Mercury and the sun in the first house with Neptune and Jupiter in the fourth house and Saturn and Gemini in the tenth house. Essentially, his career forces him to spend a lot of time away from home. So with Chiron and Aries, the native ask themselves, do I have the right to exist? And there are issues with power and control. Uh, this person can be a victim of blackmail with Chiron in the eighth house, betrayal or extortion, and there's an identity crisis as well. Currently, Saturn is transiting through Pisces, which is his seventh and eighth houses, and Cat is more focused on relationships, whether he's focused on building relationships or severing them. He is assessing the quality and the quantity of his relationships at this time. 
Uranus is in Taurus in the 10th house from his ascendant. And then it's going to be in the 10th house from his son when it goes into Gemini. This is unexpected accomplishments, increased fame, attention, appreciation, accolades, visibility, but also unexpected losses or turmoil in the career sector. Cat is currently in his sixth house of perfection, which is ruled by Capricorn. And the rule of Capricorn is in his natal 10th house. There is an emphasis on work matters and career, daily work habits and routines, increased fame, attention, notoriety. But with Saturn, this comes with weight, increased responsibilities, karmic retribution, being rewarded or punished for past deeds. This sixth house perfection here is amplifying the effects of this transiting Saturn sun opposition, transiting Saturn Saturn square, transiting Uranus conjunct Jupiter in the 10th house. The helium balloon that has been released into the stratosphere may start to feel like an anchor as Saturn in the seventh house increases criticism judgment, and scrutiny from opposition. Past deeds may help or hurt Cat Williams. It looks like his past generosity will protect him from too much damage unless he's done something very egregious. The eclipses are in his eighth and second houses, so over the next year, he may experience something that forces him to face his own mortality, dangerous experiences, intense psychological turmoil caused by triggering experiences dealing with death, betrayal, or lawsuits. There's a risk of getting robbed as well. Pluto is conjunct his north node in Aquarius, giving him strength, power, courage, and determination to win all battles. This is activating the Grand Air Trine in the 10th, 2nd, and the 6th houses. While Pluto is in Aquarius, this is going to be extremely transformative for him. He's going to have so much energy, so much vitality, so much power, so much influence. Now let's talk about the first house. The first house represents the personality, first impressions, and how we relate to others based on how we want them to treat us. Cat Williams' ascendant is in Leo. This is the natural performer, regal, someone who understands showmanship and ceremony. He has a unique personality that he expresses very confidently. He's proud. He's brave. He's a flashy dresser. As an example of Cat's unique and creative way of expressing himself, he is famous for playing a role of a pimp with a bouncy roller set. He was wearing bright, expensive, well-tailored outfits. He had a distinctive, high-pitched voice, which he uses to accent the personalities of the characters he plays. Leo ascendants have a regal or haughty personality. They hate looking bad or being embarrassed or disrespected, and they usually stand up for their appearance for better or worse. But their swagger or their bravado commands attention regardless. Kat has a stellium in the first house, so there's a focus on developing and expressing personal identity protecting the ego. He's very independent. He's learning how to be. He's fighting for the right to express himself authentically, and he's determined to live life on his own terms. There's also some self-centeredness here, which isn't necessarily selfishness, but he is always thinking about what makes him more special or more different from other people. Not more important necessarily, but what makes me different from all these other people that are around me. Now, this is important for his career because he has to cultivate a distinctive personality and distinctive voice with Mercury and Leo that distinguishes him from other people who are in the same profession. In the entertainment industry, there's no one else like Cat Williams, even though he does remind me of Prince and also um, Charleston White to some extent. Um, but yeah, Prince and he have similar energies in their chart. So let's get into Mercury. Mercury is the planet of all forms of communication, speaking, reading, writing. It facilitates the transmission of the sun's rays to human consciousness. Mercury rules the objective mind. It's the rationale, intellect, information, and data, but not necessarily wisdom or compassion. That is more so Jupiter. Tense aspects to Mercury for malefics can cause mental illness, depression, bipolar disorders, schizophrenia, etc. Cat has several aspects to Mercury that support very high intellect and perspicacity. He has Mercury and Leo combust the sun and Virgo. This is speaking from the heart, honest and fearless communication, performative in speech, exceptional intelligence and perceptiveness, shedding light on dark spaces because Mercury is in the 12th house from his sun. This is hubris, showmanship, speaking for the common man, filtering information, discernment. Cat is popular for his controversial comments about Hollywood going back to his first comedy special. These comments are what eventually made him a target for harassment by law enforcement, which may have caused him to have a mental breakdown at some point. He was allegedly blackballed because he was too proud to get on his knees, figuratively or literally, I don't know, which is very hard for Leo Ascendant to do. Leo Ascendant's 
do not like to bow down to anybody. This is like asking a king or a queen to give up their crown. A Leo ascendant would rather get their behinds beat than back away from someone bigger and stronger. Getting knocked out for a Leo ascendant and even a sun sign is less humiliating than being called a coward. So with the Leo Virgo combination of the ascendant and the sun sign, Cat has courageous humility and he uses his bravery, Leo, to fight for the underdog, Virgo. Cat has Mercury in its house of joy. This is a brilliant, dazzling mind that loves to communicate high intellect. Mercury loves to be in the first house because it can be used to project the identity and the personality of the individual. The voice and communication style becomes part of the persona. Natives with this placement exemplify the qualities of Loki, the trickster, the magician, a highly effective communicator with the ability to make people see what they want them to see and nothing else. These are excellent salespersons, storytellers, writers, performers, actors, public speakers, artists, craftsmen, etc., and even athletes if Mercury is aspected by Mars. So Cat also has Mercury in exaltation by mutual reception with the Sun and Virgo. This amplifies the qualities of each planet, Mercury and the Sun. Mercury takes on the qualities of the Sun and the Sun takes on the qualities of Mercury. This reception places both planets in their highest dignity, which allows Cat to share illuminating insights that elevate the consciousness of the collective. This is astral traveling, psychic abilities, prophetic dreams, foresight, futuristic thinking, seeing with his eyes closed. Cat may also have telepathic abilities. He can see in the dark, which means that he can see what others cannot. But he's not a good judge of character because he has too much empathy or he has a lot of empathy. I don't want to say too much. He has a lot of empathy, which attracts leeches, users, and manipulators. In Cat's mind, if he takes care of you, then there's no reason for you to manipulate or take advantage of him. Unfortunately, that is not how leeches and parasites think. Leeches and parasites feel entitled to more than just your generosity. They want what you have as if they've earned it themselves. So Cat has to be careful not to surround himself with the parasite phylum of the human family. These are people who are born to take because they have nothing to give. And I don't mean just money. Some people can't even give genuine love, compassion, appreciation, or support, which is free. Cat also has Mercury square Neptune. This aspect can cause muddled or confused thinking, intuitive subjective reasoning, pixelated thoughts, pointillism, incredible imagination and ability to experience what one is thinking. There is little to no differentiation between what Cat is thinking and what he's experiencing. He's a visual listener and learner. He has photographic memory. He can see beyond the material. This is subliminal communication, hypersensitivity, extrasensory perception, synesthesia, reading between the lines, absorbing information, projection, and incredible empathy. Now, with that said, a cat has been known to behave erratically in situations. This can be attributed to his Uranus and Libra, which is disposited by his Venus in the first house, which is where his son and ascendant are also. But he is known to act erratically in situations. He can overreact. He can get involved in unnecessary fights. He can be reckless or careless with his words. Individuals with these aspects are susceptible to being mounted or possessed by spirits that affect thought, communication, and sensory perception. With this aspect, Cat can immerse himself in the world of fantasy, magic, illusion, and spirituality. When he reads, he becomes the characters he's reading about. The characters become real. Stories become his home. He may have an extensive library in his home as well. Reading is a way for Cat to escape from reality. He is like Bastion Bucks from the Never Ending Story movie, which came out in the 1980s. So there's a contradiction here because on the one hand, Cat has exceptional intuition with the ability to discern fact from fiction. But again, he's susceptible to being deceived because of his empathy. For Cat, the energy of Virgo acts as a tight rope to maintain his sanity or his connection with reality. A weak or debilitated Mercury like in Sagittarius or Pisces, squaring Neptune would increase the probability of severe mental illness like schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Cat is also hypersensitive to drugs and alcohol, which can lead to out-of-body experiences, psychedelic experiences. He has an addictive personality, so he needs to be careful with drugs and alcohol, which can also facilitate the mounting of spirits that can cause erratic behavior. As far as Cat reading 3,000 books per year, 
Cat is able to speed read because he captures snapshots of the page and then immerses himself into the world of the individual that he's reading about. So he's not actually reading, he's experiencing or embodying the characters of the story. Most people learn faster by doing than reading. This is called kinesthetic or experiential learning. So if his mind is doing what he's reading about because he's a visual listener learner, then he can visualize what he's reading about like watching an instructional video. And this is actually quite dope, like it's dope as hell. I would not be surprised if Kat has visited the Golden Library a few times. He definitely has access to the Akashic Records with Neptune and Jupiter in the fourth house where Mercury. So the dispositor of my Mercury is square Neptune. And that gives me the ability to articulate what Kat is talking about or what he's experienced because I've consumed books as a child as well. In fact, my dream life would be to live in a small cottage in the woods with nature and books. Nothing but nature and books, that's it. So with Neptune in the fourth house, there's an emotional connection to the characters in the books, which facilitates his ability to empathize with them. They, them, you becomes me and I, and this immersion allows him to experience instead of just read. With this aspect, Mercury isn't just transmitting raw data. It's transferring the psyche from one person to another. So cats may also be able to read what people are thinking. Cat said that he would read for eight hours a day. So it is possible for him to read up to 10 books per day. And the more you read, the faster you get at it. Reading is an analog way of building a database of information in your mind to reference as you navigate through life. We need to start promoting more reading literacy instead of just focusing on digital literacy because digital interfaces are designed to be easily accessible, which doesn't necessarily support critical thinking. What is happening now is uh, people are parroting ideas that they have not read or researched because they know how to use a computer better than they know how to read a book or resource paper. I remember when we used to debate about what we read in books and you know, philosophy and ideas instead of having dumbed down conversations about other people's half-baked ideas. We need to get back to that. AI is not an excuse to be intellectually lazy. All right, now let's get into Cat Williams' son. The sun represents the light force of the individual, the life force. It is the cosmic consciousness or what we aspire to be regardless of our race, gender, culture, socioeconomic status, etc. It is how we distinguish ourselves from other people. This is the I, the ego identity, and how we navigate through life based on the goals that we want to achieve. Kat has a son in Virgo, which makes him a natural analyst. He's a critic. He's a perfectionist. He's a hard worker who sacrifices creativity for efficiency and practicality. And this is done through repetition. With the Ascendant and Mercury in Leo, though, um, Kat has a healthy combination of creativity and perfectionism. So Kat has a son in Virgo, square Saturn, and Gemini in the 10th house. This is the analyst. This is mental acuity organizing information for the most effective and relevant communication, humility, self-deprecation, being critical, feeling different like you don't belong, self-consciousness, insecurity caused by the father. Saturn is known as a taskmaster, karma, authority, restriction, limitation, heaviness. Its cold dryness is an enemy to the sun's hot dryness. So while Cat was growing up, his ability to express himself or to assert his own identity or individuality was hampered by his father's influence. And at some point, he may have weighed himself down with the heaviness of doubt, self-criticism, um, and feeling burdened by the responsibility of living up to his father's expectations. Because with the aspect of Saturn square the sun, um, Kat's father may have punished him for not adhering to his father's strict rules. The Saturn square sun aspect also indicates that Kat's father may have been at war with himself. There was a contradiction between the public and the private persona. And this is to be expected because, you know, Kat's father was very spiritual, very religious, but the religion of America is capitalism. So American culture is capitalism. And whatever values or traditions that we have as a society is designed to bolster capitalism. It's not designed to bolster family and community and love of God and morality and super consciousness and evolution. That is not the goal of capitalism. It is hard to be a religious, spiritual, or righteous person in the belly of the beast. You know, before we end up in the belly of the beast or Babylon, we have to be swallowed up by the mouth of Moloch. Capitalism is basically the industrialization of cannibalism and human sacrifices for demon spirits, which I will speak about more later in this month. So religion in the United States is like a joke for the most part because there's so many vices, so many temptations. The culture does not support abstinence, chastity, sobriety. 
Capitalism breeds um, hedonism, drunkenness, excess, wastefulness, individualism. Forget family, forget communities, forget spirituality, forget all that. So it is not a surprise that many so-called religious or spiritual people in this country, they have a difficult time walking the straight and narrow path because there are temptations everywhere. And that is by design. But anyway... With the Saturn square sun aspect, Kat has experienced a lifelong struggle to prove himself worthy of his father's love. The father can be a physical father or a spiritual father. Kat's father instilled principles in him that he follows to this day. Again, these are religious principles or general parental guidance. These principles are the yardstick by which Kat measures his self-worth. With Sun and Virgo square Saturn, there is an obsession with following rules that restricts the freedom of thought and movement in order to attain perfection or self-mastery. Kat occasionally acts erratically to rebel against his strict religious upbringing. This rebellion is Mercury and Venus restoring balance within him. He goes from caring too much to not caring at all, representing the duality of both Mercury and Venus. But Mercury's dualism is about weights and measures. So what is on the right must be equal to what is on the left. Venus's dualism is about balance and harmony, which is not necessarily symmetrical like Mercury would be. Although beauty is exemplified as perfect symmetry, there are abstract forms of creative expression like music and art and dance and writing that are not necessarily symmetrical, but they are nevertheless balanced because they are components of the whole. And this is according to the Aristotelian principle of the whole being greater than the sum of its parts. That's the principle of Venus. I'm willing to sacrifice aspects of myself to maintain the wholeness of this relationship. However, with Venus and Virgo, there is too much emphasis in the parts or the components or the aspects instead of the whole. So relationships become transactional and even imbalanced as one person may feel like they are, they have to sacrifice what they want, what they need or what they desire to make their partner happy. Happy. A lot of Venus and Virgo people tend to be attracted to abusive, narcissistic, selfish individuals who they have to serve. Their love language is service. So they attract people who want to be served. And these people are typically very selfish. And we can see evidence of this in Kat's life. He gives to others far more than he receives in return. Um, for him, though, the reward is knowing that he's made their lives easier somehow. In spite of the extremes in his thinking, he's a pragmatist at heart. I mean, not only does he have a grand trine in air signs, but he has a lot of Earth in his chart as well. His sun, his Venus, his Pluto, um, Mercury in mutual reception to the sun. This is a lot of Earth energy. So he's very pragmatic, even though he's, he's idealistic. There's a balance of idealism and pragmatism. So Kat also has a sun square Neptune. This is a lack of identity or ego. This is a desire to identify with someone or something greater than themselves. This is pixelated or fractured identity, self-sacrificing, self-righteousness or moralism that erodes individuality, spiritual or ideological beliefs that take precedence over self-preservation. This is the personification of Christ-like martyrdom. So Kat has the sun in Virgo and Neptune in Sagittarius. Neptune represents discernment and Sagittarius represents philosophy. With the square, Kat occasionally sacrifices his discernment and his intellect and his common sense for his philosophical ideals and his beliefs. He trusts people who don't deserve to be trusted. He gives to people who do not appreciate him. And at some point, this behavior may backfire like it did with Tupac, with Whitney, with Michael Jackson. Some of the people who have benefited from him, from his generosity, will betray him as soon as he tells them no or as soon as he establishes boundaries. I think a couple of years ago, Lunell the Comedian said that Cat Williams was robbed of tens of millions of dollars by the people who worked for him. That is an example of what I'm talking about as far as people not appreciating him and taking advantage of him. So Kat is popular for his larger than life personality with Saturn Square Neptune. He has the ability to mask his true identity behind an alluring, deceptive, fantastical, mystical, magical persona like an actor, which is not a bad thing. You know, if, if you're acting, you're not necessarily lying. You're acting like someone else, but it is considered lying. It is considered lying. Yeah, but I don't think he's doing it in his personal life per se. I think he does it more so for his profession. So he can hide his true identity behind an alluring persona like Whitney Houston and Erica Badu or even Kim Kardashian. Neptune has a corrosive influence that amalgamates the ego identity with an external force or creation. This is another aspect that facilitates spiritual possession, especially when under the influence of drugs and alcohol. Here, Cat Williams becomes the characters he reads about. Not just Mercury, Square Neptune, 
even though Mercury is a despiser of his sun, this is also sun square Neptune. So Katz embodies the characters that he reads about, even Jesus Christ and other biblical characters. So even though Neptune has a merging effect, there is still a splitting of the identity or personality because it's a square. The severity of that split depends on the modality of the signs involved in this square. So fixed signs are more rigid than mutable signs. Cat has a mutable sun, square mutable Neptune. So although there's a major divergence here, Cat still embraces the duality in its personality and its identity easier than someone like myself who has planets in all the fixed signs. But again, even though there is some integration or merging of energies with Neptune, square the sun sign, uh, Mercury is still involved here. So this increases volatility, instability, illusions, confusions, erraticism. And it almost becomes scary because, you know, there's a contrast of oscillating from cool, calm, collected, and rational to slapping people in stores or getting involved in wrestling matches with teenagers or doing other erratic things. Like, how do you go from being the brain, from pinky in the brain, to pinky? You go from pinky to the brain or Jekyll and Hyde. It's a, a huge contrast. Furthermore, with Neptune square the Ascendant, Cat has a side of his personality that is diametrically opposed to the image that he portrays to the public. Just like Whitney Houston, who was a tomboy who may have been bisexual, but she was able to convince the public that she was this perfect, glamorous Barbie doll, innocent until she met Bobby Brown, which was not true. Now, earlier I mentioned the modality of the signs involved with the Neptune sun square. Unlike Cat, Whitney's sun and Neptune are in thick signs. So she had a more difficult time integrating these energies and playing pretend for the public than Cat Williams does. Now, Whitney and Cat's respective genders does play a part in how easy it is for them to play up the role that society creates for them. Because women, especially black women, we are not allowed to be complicated figures. We have to fit into a capitalistic archetype for public consumption. Men have to deal with this as well, but men in general have more freedom to be themselves, to express themselves creatively, to be perfect and imperfect, like a Tupac or a Kanye. But Whitney was raked over the coals for not fitting into the mold that Clive Davis created for her. Cat was also raked over the coals, but he was able to redeem himself um, as a whistleblower and a hero years later. This is before the interview with Shannon Sharp. He was able to redeem himself. It hasn't escaped me that Shannon Sharp is a Gemini and Cat Williams is a Virgo. These are sister signs, both ruled by Mercury. So Sharp's platform was a perfect place for Cat to relaunch his career in a sense. Um, and it's probably the reason why the energy between these two were so natural. Shannon did appreciate Cat's frankness and humor. And Cat did appreciate Shannon's non judgmental tone and his receptivity to his ideas. Now let's get into Venus. Venus is a planet of beauty, love, harmony, balance, femininity, and relationships. This is how we reconcile paradoxes, reconcile differences, create stability, and express our love. Like Neptune, Venus amalgamates, but unlike Neptune, the qualities of the elements with Venus remain the same. Venus says, I love you so much, I'm willing to sacrifice my needs to make you happy. What I desire, I'm gonna sacrifice that to make you happy. Neptune says, I love you so much, I'm gonna sacrifice myself to make you happy. Venus is exalted in Pisces, which is cold ruled by Neptune and Jupiter, and it falls in Virgo, the sign opposite Pisces. Cat has Venus in Virgo, square Saturn and Gemini. So self-love is an issue here. With Venus in Virgo, square Saturn, love is practical, conditional, servile, feeling like you have to earn or buy love, feeling unloved or unlovable, self-sabotaging relationships and emotional connections by dating broken, damaged, or unavailable people. There's an inability to sustain long-term relationships due to deep insecurities about self-worth. This person's critical about beauty. They may be attracted to rejection and to plain, simple, poor, or downtrodden people. Or on the other hand, this is someone who is very affected. They will only date people of a certain pedigree, of a certain class, of a certain income. And it's not about love. It's about provision. It's about social status. And it's very practical with Venus Square Saturn. Although Cat Williams is known for being generous to friends, family, and strangers alike, his love life is not stable. He said that he likes toxic women, which may or may not be the truth, but I'm going off what he said. Natives with Saturn square Venus usually end up in abusive or one-sided relationships because their father may have made him feel like they were unlovable or unworthy of reciprocal affection. This is an aspect of someone who falls in love with something that's taboo or what they cannot have 
or they fall in love with the responsibility or the process of earning someone's love. The courting process, proving their devotion to someone cold, distant, ineffectual, like a stoic father or even God, who some people refer to as a deadbeat, abusive, or an absentee father. Quick to punish, but slow to reward. Cat may intentionally push partners away with his words if he gets triggered. And unfortunately, um, with Saturn, the severing is swift, painful, and impossible to repair, similar to the dynamic between him and his father. Cat has Venus and Virgo squared Neptune and Jupiter as well. This is excessive generosity, bleeding money. Money has no value or meaning unless it is used to alleviate suffering, paying tithes, ritualistic generosity, projection, selfless love, giving as a religious practice or principle, wasting or losing money. Money dissolves into thin air. Rob the resources, exploited, take advantage of, being used for money, a sucker for sob stories, feeling worthless unless one is giving, doesn't feel lovable or worthy unless he's giving. He gives from his heart. He falls in love quickly and loses interest if a person has flaws. He is searching for unconditional agape altruistic love, which is very complicated because he has a square with Saturn and Gemini. This is someone who searches for the perfect partner to avoid commitment or connection. So it's like, I'm going to get with somebody who's flawed on purpose because I know they're going to disappoint me. So I don't really have to commit to them. Or this is, I'm going to get involved with someone who does not love themselves so they cannot love me, which validates my feelings of worthlessness. This is so complicated. And no wonder, in spite of all his success and all his uh, resources and his power, he seems to be struggling within himself. And I mentioned this in my previous commentary without looking at his chart. It's quite evident. So yeah, Venus squared Neptune and Jupiter. This is sacrificing everything for love, a lover of beauty, but this is perfect beauty. This is not necessarily physical beauty. This is like beauty of spirit, beauty of heart. But that's like the perfect, uh, I don't want to say Madonna whore complex kind of sort of, but yeah, like this idealistic version of a woman that has no flaws. And as soon as the woman shows her humanity to some extent, then he gets turned off. But then with Venus square Saturn, that's what he wanted anyway. This is also a savior complex, dating broken, damaged people. So Kat has been known to give away hundreds of thousands of dollars to strangers. At one point, he said that his former employees stole tens of millions of dollars from him. Kat goes through such extreme situations with his Venus, Neptune, <laughs> Jupiter connection that is hard to believe him sometimes like but with Neptune and Jupiter everything is over the top like everything is larger than life instead of being robbed for thousands of dollars he's robbed for tens of millions of dollars instead of getting two million views in a few months on this interview he's almost at 50 million views in less than a month instead of reading three books a day he's reading 10 books a day Instead of some people being ugly, everybody's ugly. At 50 years of age, he runs like a track star, which is also connected to Mercury and Uranus um, translating to the first house. He has over a dozen comedy specials. He's adopted 10 kids. He said he has five girls and five boys. Like grandiosity and excess is an understatement with Neptune conjunct Jupiter. Like instead of him giving hundreds of dollars away, he'll give away 15,000, 25,000. But I'm starting to think that he has so much to give because he gives so much. That's what he's learned at a young age too. The more you give, the more you have to give. Now let's get into the fourth house. The fourth house represents the foundation of the chart. This is the house of home, family, ancestry, and what we need to feel anchored or grounded in our lives. He has Neptune and Sagittarius conjunct Jupiter and Scorpio. This is a religious upbringing, a religious household. The grandmother has a strong influence in the home. Strange and unusual childhood experiences, living in the world of fantasy, never-ending story. This is magic, instability, disconnection from the home as well with Neptune and Jupiter. Jupiter is a planet that liberates as well as Neptune. So with Jupiter in the fourth house, the person may have spent a lot of time away from home, either mentally or physically. With Neptune in the fourth, this is also living in a large, beautiful home next to water, dark secrets or emotional turmoil in the home, taking care of the terminally ill within the home. This is like someone who's a death doula. Jupiter and Neptune are both planets that represent releasing the spirit from matter by death or by wisdom. At some point years ago, Cat Williams let actress, the late actress Yvette Wilson, stay in his home until she died from cervical cancer. So I wouldn't be surprised if he did this for other people as well. With Neptune and Jupiter in the fourth house, the home becomes a spiritual refuge, a temple, a spiritual retreat or hospice. 
Kat said that he has accommodations for the women who spend the night with him. He wants them to feel pampered like they're in a resort. So that is Neptune and Jupiter in the fourth house, a very lavish, loving, healing energy in the home. Now let's get into the seventh house. The seventh house is the house of relationships, partnerships, marriage, and open enemies. Planets and signs in the seventh house indicate the nature of these interactions. Cat has Aquarius on the cusp of the seventh, which means that there's a friends before lovers requirements for any relationship. The dispositor of the seventh house is in the 10th house of Saturn. Again, Kat is married to his career. This is a public relationship, marriage to a celebrity or well-known person. Now, a Saturn ruled seventh house delays or denies marriage altogether. And Kat is in his 50s and he's never been married yet. So I'm not saying that he'll never get married, but there's obviously a delay if he hasn't been married by the age of 50. If he does marry, it may be to an older person or someone who's well-respected in society. If Kat is involved with someone, there is no rush to get married to this person because they enjoy their relationship no matter what stage it's in. This is the Aquarius energy, friendship before anything else. Saturn is not the most romantic placement for marriage. This is a marriage of duty, responsibility, and till death do us part, regardless of the circumstances. This is not a marriage based on physical attraction, but genuine love, respect, appreciation, and duty. Kat's marriage partner may have Geminian, Capricornian, or Aquarian characteristics, or the dynamics of the marriage exemplify the qualities and characteristics of these signs. Kat prefers intelligent simple humanitarian and even flawed people that need fixing the fixing is the act of service to show love the recipient of the fixing has to be humble enough to accept it without feeling degraded but cat has to also make sure he doesn't sabotage the relationship by reminding the person of their flaws and unfortunately with his mercury aspects and his mars and aquarius opposing ascendant he has the ability to weaponize people's deepest fears and insecurities against them which is why some people prefer to keep their distance from him. If you guys remember my Tupac commentary about Mars and Aquarius, these people tend to have lots of enemies or friends become enemies like Jesus and the disciples. So there's a connection with Mars in the sixth in the sign of Aquarius and the seventh house being in the sign of Aquarius. Now there's a trine between Mars and Saturn, which is generally good. It's better than the square, definitely, and the opposition. So Cat Williams is not necessarily a bully. He may have a temper with Mars conjunct the moon, but he's not a bully. Saturn square or Saturn conjunct or Saturn opposite people tend to be bullies or very dominant in nature. So they're very um, determined to get what they want regardless of how it affects other people around him. Pat is not that self-centered as we can see with his very generous nature. He overextends himself. Let's talk about the 10th house. Saturn and Gemini. This is a career as a public speaker, well-respected and revered, legacy cemented, becomes more famous with age, a difficult road to success, the risk of losing everything because of the way he communicates his beliefs. Saturn is opposing both Neptune and Jupiter. He is constantly looking to connect with God. So he connects with God through his good works, his generosity, his compassion, and his altruism. He feels the power of God in the hearts of the people who he's given money to or he's been supportive of. Um, he feels the power of God in his children that he's raised and the comedians he supported. And with Saturn and Pisces square his Saturn and Gemini, he is going to be rewarded or punished for his past deeds. So it looks like he's done a lot of good things for a lot of people. He's going to be rewarded for that. People are going to come forward and talk about how much he's done for them in the past. And that will help his legacy as well. Yes, yeah, Saturn opposing Neptune and Jupiter. This is spirit trapped in matter, the desire to escape the realities of life chronic depression, a firefly trapped in a jar. The wisdom gained from childhood experiences is used to transmute limitations into opportunities. In this position, Saturn is not a malefic. It is the paperweight that is used to anchor Kat to reality, which has actually given him the discipline and the work ethic he needed to become successful. It is interesting how this Saturn square Mercury aspect did not affect his speech, but I do think it has affected his height. Tense aspects to Saturn on the luminaries and the ascendant can make the native short, sickly, very thin, or even grossly overweight. This is not the same as the sun in Capricorn or Aquarius, which actually gives natives very beautifully proportionate, healthy bodies. But regardless of Kat's height limitations, his Leo ascendant gives him the confidence of a giant. He looks small, but his presence is enormous, similar to Prince. Cat Williams always reminded me of Prince, another Mercurian with the Saturn sun opposition. But unlike Cat, Prince had a weaker sun in the seventh combust Mercury and Gemini. So I'll do an analysis on Prince in a couple of months around his birthday. Okay. So 
Before I analyzed Cat's chart, I thought that some of the things he was saying was cap. But now instead of believing 80% of what he says, I actually believe about 95% of what he says. The remaining 5% of doubt or cynicism is my Scorpio insurance policy. It is our birthright as Scorpios to not take everything, anything at face value. I wouldn't know how to do that if I tried to, to be honest. So yeah, I do believe most of what he's saying more so now than I did before because of his chart. His chart supports everything that he said for the most part. But anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you for listening. I look forward to reading your feedback. If you want to order a personal reading from me, please visit my website. The link is in the description box. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll speak to you soon.